As noted over the past few days, no stock just goes straight up forever. Um, and Tesla stock is not going to be any different than that. It's not just going to go straight up to its all-time highs or to 700 or to 1,000 in a straight line. But then, of course, you knew that. <laughs> so today is kind of looking like a pause day. Um, we're down 10 last time I looked. And quite frankly, I'm not terribly sad about that because I just moved around some money and the end of this week or beginning of next week, that money might finally get to its destination. Can you believe a financial institution that still uses the mail to get money from one place to another? Anyway, I'm kind of okay if Tesla stays down right now. I'm hoping that's okay with you. Um, uh, but in any case, it's going to do what it's going to do. So where is Tesla headed next? All-time high. That would be the next logical, technical level that it will need to pierce. Um, there's no real logic to it. It's kind of this thing, this psychological, I guess, level of 410 or 11. And people have all kinds of different numbers for it. I don't know why it isn't something obvious, but I think it's 411 last time I checked. Um, it might actually require, though, I think it's going to require more stimulus. It's going to require another catalyst than that most likely catalyst. I don't necessarily know that the Juniper reveal will be that kind of, a, of an event, but I do think that the Model 2.5, the more affordable vehicle, that would be the kind of event I think that could finally give it that next push that it needs. Because right now, this 100 points, you know, it's mostly about the the uh, Elon Musk and, and uh Donald Trump romance. Um, and uh, people are going to be wondering, now that they've given it this 100 points, there's going to have to be, I guess, I think a little more than just an emotional response that this is very, very important for Tesla. You've heard some uh, arguments on the other side from Brian White and from Larry yesterday. Later today, you'll you'll hear from uh, Warren Redlick, and he's not exactly 100% sure that he cares about this bromance either. I personally think it's significant, and I think all three of them agree that the perception among the, you know, the chattering classes out there is that it is important for Tesla, and that that's the run-up. That's why we've seen this 100-point run-up. I mean, it's not a, an insignificant amount. Anyway, Tesla shares edged lower in early trading. Um, they're still up more than $320 billion since last week's election as investors reset growth and profit forecasts for the group, given CEO Elon Musk's close ties to President-elect Donald Trump and his growing influence and on the new Republican-controlled con uh, Congress. This is from, <laughs> I didn't write it down again, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, Musk, who has spent the past weekend at Trump's home in Palm Beach, Florida, has weighed in on everything from cabinet appointments to the Federal Reserve independence and is expected to be a key voice that Trump will rely on for advice. That has to be important with the things with like China trade and domestic technology. Adam Jonas. Yeah, where is this? Is this anyway, this top Wall Street. Is this from the street? I think this might. No, this is not from the street. Oh, Investor.com. Investor.com. That's where it's from. Top Wall Street analyst Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley, in fact, says Tesla could reach a market value of around $1.6 trillion if his bull case for the stock comes to fruition. And Musk's involvement with the new administration allows for a repricing of AI ambitions. Investor perception of Tesla CEO has shifted significantly over the past week, said Randy, with Elon Musk's public support for President-elect Trump positioning him as a prominent voice in the incoming administration. Tesla uh, posted very strong 17.2 thousand insured registrations, says Gary Black, for the week of November 4 through 10, and the strongest week so far this quarter. This is what uh, AJ was hoping for. After six weeks, Tesla's China fourth quarter is up 23.7 year over year and 4.2% quarter over quarter. We can see Tesla pause here, Gary says, after a 39% gain since Trump's victory. And it's even more than that if you go back prior to the victory. And the EPS estimates have increased plus 1% over the past week from the various forecasting organizations. 
Here's the article from investing.com. What was that other, who, who was that other article from? Maybe that was from the street. Investing.com says this, the recent rally in Tesla shares in the wake of Donald Trump's electoral victory is likely to continue this week, according to Paige Hansen, industrial sector specialist at JP Morgan. Tesla stock jumped 9% on Monday, extending a significant rally. We saw that yesterday. But even before the election outcome, Tesla shares were on a glide path towards the $300 mark. Many saw a thesis-changing earnings print-forward guide, according to Hansen. Specifically, the electric vehicle giant's latest earnings print indicated that gross margins are expected to bottom in quarter four. No, gross margins have already, they've already bottomed in quarter two. They were better in quarter three. I don't know what she's saying here. So I'm just letting you know what other people think. Tesla is also the only automotive manufacturer anticipated to have significant production growth next year. I assume she means domestic U.S. type <laughs> and maybe European and Japanese. But I do think that the South Koreans and many of the Chinese are expecting significant growth. Hansen explains the change in perception among investors is attributed to Tesla's underrepresentation. Uh, in long only portfolios for several years and its popularity as a short position among hedge funds. However, she points out that technical upward pressure is likely to intensify, to intensify as long only investors move from neutral to potentially overweight positions, even if they went from, new, from negative to neutral. That would be good. Following the election results, investors now view Tesla as a must-own stock. A stark contrast to the past two years when the company faced weak EV demand last one year and, and issues with gross margin normalization and earnings misses. Thus, the technical upward pressure is even further exacerbated post-election results. Over the weekend, further discussions emerged about Tesla's status as a Trump trade with expectations of continued technical upward pressure. Yes, as I've been saying, now here's the article from the street. Tesla shares edged lower. Okay, let's pass that because you see I already read that. Top Wall Street analyst Adam Jonas of Morgan Stanley says Tesla could reach, I said that. Musk's entry into the political sphere has expanded investor thinking around Tesla's fundamental outlook, according to Jonas. The question now is whether the re-rating is temporary or if Tesla will take on a larger role in the U.S. renewable automotive industrial complex. Jonas has long argued that Tesla is based on a host of other business dynamics tied to the sale of electric vehicles, such as licensing its driver assistance system, its broader network and mobility services, as well as its battery, energy, and insurance divisions. He also said that Tesla's Dojo supercomputer, which is powered by artificial intelligence technology, could add more than 500 million to Tesla's market value through a faster adoption rate in mobility, such as robotaxis and network services, software as a service. Musk himself touted the profit potential of AI technologies, particular with respect to the group's ambition to offer self-driving software to its 7 million global EV fleet. We are going to double down on Dojo and we see a path to being competitive, according to uh, uh, Elon. We hear enthusiasm for all things AI uh, goes on uh, the in, in this report. Tesla is very frequently excluded from the potential paths of expression in a portfolio, Jonas said. The analysts noted that around 80% of the group's revenue this year came directly from the sale of electric vehicles. Yeah, it's amazing to read and to watch and to look at these different videos and whatnot from even sophisticated investors like the All In podcast. And they'll go down a list of who is doing what with the AI and they never mention XAI. They never mention Tesla. It's so funny. It's like, you know, the 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 better name brands are the ones that get talked about. Over the next four years, we expect to see Tesla's total addressable market aperture expand to a far wider domains, many of which are not included in buy-side or sell-side financial models at this time. Jonas reiterated his overweight rating and a 310 price target, <laughs> but he also laid out a bull case which could take the stock to $500 a share. That's a 43% advance from current levels and would peg its market value at a $1.6 trillion. That market move would likely require this. Here's what Adam Jonas says. EV sales of around 8 million units per year 
around 400 gigawatt hours deployed through its energy storage systems and a collective contribution of around $146 a share from Tesla's software services and full driving technology. Wow, he, 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 he needs a lot. With the current share price around 350 in interday trading, Tesla shares are now trading at approximately 16 times uh, fiscal 2030 forecast, up from around 11 times last week. At $400, the stock would trade at 19 times, and a 500 price would bring the valuation just below 24 times sales, I guess he's talking about. Last month, Tesla posted stronger than expected third quarter earnings at 72 cents a share. Tesla also said it expected slight growth in vehicle deliveries this year following last year's record. We know that. We can't overcome massive force majeure events, but I think with our lower cost vehicles, the advent of autonomy, something like 20% to 30% growth next year, according to Elon Musk. All right, this is Randy Kirk. Hit like, subscribe, and notify. Um, yeah, I think that we're in this position right now. We're going to have a pause where do we go next? That's a, a a very interesting subject, but I do think Adam Jonas is dramatically undervaluing uh, the the stock uh, at this point, uh, as he as he as he has. Even though I think he's a good an analyst, I think he's undervaluing it. Uh, later today, we will have. Uh, I, I think I mentioned this. Up a minute ago, Warren Redlick will be on this morning. You don't want to miss that one. And then Nick Gibbs, of course, on Tuesday night. Um, uh, Home Depot. All right, this is this is a, a, a very interesting story. The next three stories, hang in there because the, the, you want to hear this. Home Depot guided for slightly better sales in quarter four, but CNBC reports it this way: there is pent. This is according to Home Depot. There is pent up demand for projects, according to the CEO. Our customers tell us that their lives are changing. Their families are growing or they're upsizing, they're downsizing. They need to move for a job. There is demand for remodeling, but they're putting it on hold until they see a more favorable financing environment. It's not going to happen, folks. And so the demand is there. The question is, when is it unlocked? I think it's going to be unlocked. This is just me. But I, I think you'll, you've heard me say this before. I think it's going to be unlocked next year no matter what. People are not going to be able to put off those purchases anymore. They're just going to have to pay the financing rates. Home Depot customers have continued to put off projects, even though they're in good financial shape, he said. About 90% of his co the company's do-it-yourself customers own their own home. Didn't know that. Interesting stat. Okay, this is from Dan Ives this morning. He says... 2,000 investors said Apple was a hardware company when they launched the iPhone and they never saw the growth ahead in their spreadsheets. 2014 investors did not understand Nadella and the cloud. 2022 bears viewed NVIDIA and dismissed AI, Tesla, and, auto, and, as auto, and autonomous in the same narrative. He's suggesting maybe that they're still underestimating Tesla as they have un underestimated these other companies. The NFIB, here we go. You know, my one of my favorite reports, and it's still not good. The NFIB, the National Federation of Independent Business, Businesses Optimism Index, rose by 2.2 points in October to 93.7, but that's the 34th consecutive month below the 50-year average of 98. The uncertainty index rose seven points to 110. Now, this is pre, I'm sure this must have been pre-election. This is a, a survey, by the way. This is a survey. It's, it's recent, but I'm pretty sure most of it would have been uh, pre-election. A seasonally adjusted net negative 20% of small business owners reported higher nominal sales in the past three months. It's the lowest reading since July of 2020 that only 20% of the, uh, uh, in fact, a net negative 20% of small businesses got higher nominal sales. With the election over, the quote is, small business owners will begin to feel less uncertain about future business conditions, according to Chief Economist Bill Dunkelberg. Although optimism is on the rise on Main Street, small business owners are still facing unprecedented economic adversity. Low sales, Unfilled job openings and ongoing inflationary pressures continue to cha challenge. Number one, a net negative 20% of all owners reported higher nominal sales. Just said that. Seasonally adjusted and net 31% reported raising compensation. That's down from 1% in September. The last time it was this low was April of 2021. 
The net percent of owners raising average selling prices fell one point, but it was still a net 21% seasonally adjusted. 23% of owners reported that inflation was still their single most important problem in operating their businesses, unchanged from September and remaining the top, the number one issue. So I know I go back and forth, but I'm sure you're, you have to be the same way. This inflation issue, is it solved? Isn't it solved? These, this is a survey. They take it month after month. They're talking to small business owners. The guy down on Main Street that's got three employees, got one employee, guys like me, <laughs> unadjusted, 13% reported lower average selling prices and 32 higher average selling prices. Price hikes were the most frequent in the finance retail. They were uh, most frequently noted in finance, retail, construction, and services, seasonally adjusted a net 26 plan price hikes in October. And that's 26% plan to hike prices in October. Seasonally adjusted a net 31% reported raising compensation down one point from September. The last time it was this low was April, 2021. A net 23% plans to raise compensation in the next three months. 8% of owners cited labor costs as their top business problem, only 8%, down 1% from September, 5% below the highest reading of 13%, which was in December 2021. 20% said that labor quality was their number one business problem. That continues to be an issue. So then I, this is my favorite article of the day. I am shocked and amazed by this article from USA Today. In a decisive victory, the American people have given Trump a mandate to get inflation under control. And one of the best ways he could do this is to reduce excessive government spending and out-of-control budget deficits, something the Biden-Harris administration refused to do. The federal government has grown. This is USA Today. The federal government has grown to enormous proportions with ever burgeoning numbers of agencies and regulations that stifle innovation and cost taxpayers absurd amounts of money. Trump has acknowledged this country's $36 trillion debt, which was about $27 trillion when he left office, and the interest alone in the national debt now costs more than what the company spends on defense or on Medicare. Trump also added $8 trillion to the debt, but much of that was because of covid Honesty in USA Today. Musk is eager to help and he understands the urgency. The Department of Government Efficiency? Sounds good to me, says this article. Musk, who appeared at several of Trump's campaign rallies, has someone jokingly suggested that the Doge would describe his role in the incoming administration. Trump has thrown out the title, the Secretary of Cost Cutting. Either way, the aim is an important one. Regardless of the title, Musk ends up getting his role largely will be one of advisor. Any sweeping changes would need to go through the powerful Office of Management and Budget as well as Congress. Well, maybe not. So in reality, Musk will be the public face of broader effort to decrease the size of government, says Chris Edwards, an expert on the federal budget at the Cato Institute. Musk has angered a lot of Democrats in recent years for the takeover of Twitter, as well as his more recent support of Republicans, including Trump. It's worth keeping in mind that he first voted for a Republican in 2022. Musk was driven to the right in part because of suppression of free speech by progressives, also a big reason he bought Twitter. No matter what your politics may be, however, it's hard to argue with Musk's impressive number of accomplishments. He's a visionary of our time, and he takes someone, it takes someone like him to imagine what's possible, whether in space travel or the electric car market. It's plausible he could bring the same flair to the federal government. I just think we've got far too many government agencies, Musk said last week. The federal bureaucracy has gotten out of hand, and we just need to pare it down to a sensible level. Trump needs to think bold in year one. Cato's Edwards says Trump and Musk shouldn't waste any time in deciding what needs to go, in part because the president will hold the most influence in his first year. That's when it gets done. And Edwards thinks any effort that hopes to make a measurable difference in getting costs under control needs to be bold. If Trump plans to implement new cuts, he'll need to offset those with spending cuts elsewhere. Trump should start by hiring experienced people to head his White House budget office, which he is doing. I don't think he's got time for some big commission to spend months dilly-dallying around, Edward said. They know where the most wasteful programs are. They know that. And I think that Trump and his advisors just have to prioritize and push for those cuts. 
Edwards has several recommendations for areas where the Trump administration could identify savings, cutting federal aid to state programs, including K-12 education, housing, and transit could save more than $1 trillion a year. Wow. I want to read this article. I'm going to bring. I'll, I'm going to read through this and give you some updates myself. Edwards described these programs as inherently inefficient and undemocratic because of the costly regulations they impose and the heavy-handed controls of the federal government over the states that comes with this funding. He says he continues. I don't expect immediate miracles, but it's a great sign that Trump is tasking Musk with the role, and I anticipate Musk will make the most of the opportunity. Did you like that article? I did. <laughs> hit like. That's it's a good time right now to hit like. Where are the markets now? Okay, let's see if if Tesla's still down 10 bucks. It's been down 10, it's been down 7, it's been down 12. It's probably going to be down all day. Who knows? It, by the end of the day, the market could change its mind and decide to give it another green day. But the Magnificent Seven is mostly down, except for NVIDIA and Meta, which are, have both popped up. And the rest are only down marginally, like 60 cents or whatever. So the Magnificent Seven split 50-50, if you can get seven uh, seven companies to split that way. And the uh, Kathy Woodstocks are also just, you know, pennies one way or the other, a little split today, giving up, giving back some of those big gains of the last few days. Um, so this is not surprising. We've gone way, way out there. The Dow Jones is down 139, NASDAQ 10, and the S&P 5.61 in percentages. That would be Dow down 31, 0.31, the NASDAQ up 0.05, S&P down 0.09, and Tesla at this point down almost 3%, 2.96. All right, let's take it inside to the bonds. Why do I say take it inside? For me, it feels that way, okay, in my digital world here on my phone. Uh, the 10 year was down more. I mean, I'm sorry, was up more this morning. The the yields are up at this point, 0.5, I'm sorry, 5.9% at 4.367. This is the wrong direction, bond market. We need you to go the other way. The two year up even more at 6.3 basis points, three month unchanged, and the two month slightly down, six tenths of a basis point. So, where does that put us on that dif difference? The three-month, uh, yeah, we're back down now under 20 basis points on the three-month and 576. We're just barely over 20 on the two-month. So we're getting very close to that reinverting, which is, is going to be a story. At some point, we're going to understand that story. Uh, as after it reinverts, that's when I think people are going to start talking about it. Um, um, what does it say here? Morgan Stanley... Oh, I, that didn't work. Okay, bonds, uh, oil. We've got the oil uh, market. We got up 64 cents, so a little bit of a rebound from the big fall off. I mean, way down over the last couple of days, but we're still at $68.67 for Texas, just over uh, 70 at 72.47 for Brent. That's a $4 difference. Interesting because the Middle East seems fairly calm right now. Natural gas up 1.61%. 1, 1. Again, Almost to three dollars, two point nine six seven. Natural gas continuing to march ever upward. Again, Europe has said they're going to start buying from us instead of Russia. Uh, gold down two dollars and seventy cents at two thousand six fifteen. It's been falling for a couple of days. Silver though actually going back up again now, 0. 0.56 at thirty point seven eight, and copper down one point six eight percent at four dollars and 16 cents call it the dollar roars it says <laughs> along with bitcoin roaring but this morning anyway it's down a little bit against the euro down 0.44 and up against the yen at 0.42 uh and crypto is also the i'm sorry the bitcoin has also fallen but barely 164 sitting at 86 889 but it's that's still down about 3000 from where it was pushing up against 90, but it wasn't able to, to bust through. All right, so I think it's a pretty interesting day. A little pause, everybody's taking a minute, backing off going, hmm, what have we done? And should we do more of it? Uh, the number one thing that you care about is uh, I'm sure whether they do more of it with Tesla. Tesla's actually moving sharply up right now, sharply. I mean, seriously, in the 
couple of seconds since we last reported, we are now only down eight. So that's a pretty sharp move. Um, so in the meantime, while you're thinking about Tesla and thinking about all the, all the potential for the where, where you're going to spend the money that Tesla is going to give you when it hits a thousand, um, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notify button because uh, you're going to want to hear from. Lair, uh, I mean, um, uh, yeah, what's his name? Warren Redlick later today, and then Nick Gibbs, and then yesterday, uh, Brian White. I forgot to put it on at eleven o'clock, uh, so I put it on last night at eight. Uh, you so you might have missed it, and and Brian and I had a great discussion about this whole thing with regard to the uh, how important is the bromance, the opportunity. What is what is the opportunity with regard to the uh, uh, you know, Trump and Musk, I think it's huge. I mean, very huge. I think it puts Musk in a completely different world in terms of networking, in terms of his opportunity for knowledge coming in from people that he wouldn't normally have access to, uh, in terms of his the, his the view of him by world leaders and by people around the world in business. We'll see him uh, in a new light with new res responsibilities, but 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 new. Uh, new reasons that they need to be in partnership with him. I think it's a massive thing. Not so much maybe from Brian White. See what he has to say. I'll put that card right here. And let's let's look one more time just for fun. Just to see. Uh, it's, it's still sitting, sitting right around down eight. All right. We'll talk to you more later today and see whether Tesla manages to find a way to the green. Eh, it's okay with me if it doesn't. At least you know, until Monday or something when I find that money back in my, in the right account. All right. It's been great talking to you.